Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be painting Butterfingers from the Moonstone set Shadow Glade. This is part of the February challenge held by Goblin King Games every year, and as part of that, I'll be joining in and painting up Butterfingers here. They're all ready to go, and I've primed it first of all with the Surface Primer German Panzer Grey. And then when that was dried, I took some Two Thin Coats White Star and then dried brushed that on. Then it's time for the contrast paints. And I've gone for snake bite leather first of all here. And that's going to be great for the wood of this tree trunk. And this model just screams out for contrast paints. So I'm going to be using mostly contrast in this video with some highlighting as well. And a bit of dry brushing as we go through. But I really like this snake bite leather. It's a great colour. When that's completely dried, I took some dry Nurgling Green. If you haven't seen this before, it's really cool. It's kind of a spongy texture inside. So you pop that on your dry brush, work it into a kitchen towel or some card, and then just gently dry brush that on. I'm trying to avoid all the shrooms. We're going to cover those later. I'm being a little bit heavier at the base. And then as I work my way up the trunk, I'm just dry brushing it a little bit lighter. So that green effect is going to come off a lot more on the bottom. And I was going to do some other layers, but I thought, you know what, this just works on its own. So I was really happy with that combo of snake bite leather and nurgling green. So that's the tree done. Before we move on to the next part, I'll just quickly let you know that I've updated my Patreon now. So it's in line with everything that we're working on and the perks are coming thick and fast now. I'll tell you a lot more about Patreon at the end of the video. So if you're interested, check it out then. Right, we're back to Butterfingers now for some Contrast Griffhound Orange. And this is going to be really nice on those mushrooms. I was going to go with a dark red. I usually like that for the shrooms. But I thought because I'm going to paint Butterfingers himself blue later on, I wanted something that would work really nicely. I thought the red might clash a bit. So this orange is going to work really nicely. Then I went for Contrast Agarus Dunes, and this is going to go on those small mushrooms that are growing out of the tree itself. There's a great colour, this is going to work really nicely. They're not going to stand out too much from the tree. Then to contrast that is another contrast paint, Nasdreg Yellow. And this is going to be for this cone-shaped mushroom that's growing at the back. And then there's one other mushroom. So I thought rather than just carrying on with this, it'd be nice to add another colour just to break it up a little bit. So I've gone for Contrast Plague Bearer Flesh. And that's going to be a nice green. It's kind of a sickly green, but I think it's going to work really nicely with the yellows and oranges. Right, now let's take some Aethermatic Blue. And this is going to be for Butterfingers himself. I'm kind of going for a Will-O-The-Wisp vibe here. And so I wanted something that's a nice blue or at least like a turquoisey blue and I wondered if this would work so I've gone over it with a nice even coat really spreading it around getting it into those recesses and this is where all the detail is going to start to pop now we'll put a shade on it later on we're going to highlight it as well but as the first coat this is going to work really nicely for that willow the wisp effect I'm going over all the arms and the legs going to cover the wings as well in this color and then we'll add some shade to just bring out all those details a little bit more later on. Being careful not to go over some of the other details like the satchel and the hat. Now I took some Leviathan the Purple, another contrast paint. This is going to be great. Purple with orange and blues and yellows works really nicely. So this is just going to go along his little kind of, what would you call it, a loincloth, a nappy. But that's going to cover that. Go around the back as well. He's got a bit more of it there to paint up. So one coat of this, that's all we're going to need. That's going to cover that nicely. Then I took some Contrast Acalian Green. This is a stunning colour. I really like this one. But I'm only going to use it a little bit on this model. I'm just going to use it for his long toes or toenails. I think they're like toes with little nails at the end. But I'm painting them up as if they're big long claws. I think look like chicken feet almost. Then it's time for some more snake bite leather, and this is going to go over the satchel. So just a nice thick coat of this, being quite generous, but being careful not to go over any of the other areas. And then taking some brush off my paint when I'm doing these thinner parts, like the straps, just so I've got a bit more control. Also going around this kind of hat that he's got on as well, not overloading the brush with too much paint. And then moving on to contrast Yandan yellow. And this is going to be a nice colour, a call back to that mushroom, but also add in another colour to break up the browns and the blues that we've got on Butterfingers himself. Then some shade 
Coilia Green Shade and make sure that Athematic Blue is completely dry and then put a nice coat of this all over the body and those wings, working it into the recess. It's just going to give it a little bit more depth, make it a little bit darker in those recesses and that's going to help with the effect. And then when we start putting some highlights on it later, it's going to look a lot more interesting. I think you could just get away with Athematic Blue though if you wanted to. Okay, now back to two thin coats, White Star, and then this is going to go on the little dots of those mushrooms there. So popping that on, being very careful here. I've just watered it down a touch, just so again, got a bit more control with the paint and moving that model around, making it easy to get to the different parts. Then I mix some Athematic Blue with that white paint. I've not really done this before, but I thought I'd try it out as I want to do this as a little layer. And so this is going to highlight it a little bit. We'll put another highlight over the top that's going to be a little bit brighter than this one. But here I'm just dotting it over, being really careful not to have too much paint on the brush because it's quite thin mixing the contrast with that white paint. And then I'm going over the areas that are raised the most and are going to stand out. So the cheeks, the nose, tops of the eyes, tips of the ears, that kind of thing. And then taking some more white paint, working that in, it's going to be a little bit brighter now. And so we can go over it and give that another highlight. And just trying to make use of the same paints here while they're in the palette and just put little dots now rather than big sections, just dots on the very uppermost parts, like on the little wrist there, on the knuckles, maybe the elbow, shoulder, that kind of thing. Then it's time to do the base. So I've got some thick mud from Vallejo. This stuff's awesome. And I'm just going to use my little tool here just to push it in and fill in those gaps. And one thing you can do is just scrape some on the side and then like cut away a piece and then it's almost hanging off the little tool and then you've got a lot more control to force it in place. Keeps it a lot cleaner and you get it exactly where you want it. I decided to keep things simple and just go with a little bit of static grass. So I'm going to grab a little handful of that. Well, not a handful, that'd be way too much. A little pinch of that and then just dab it on to the mud that we put on and then I'll just give that a little tap to get rid of the excess and also blow it to make it stand up and then that's all we're going to do and then once that's on I'll just go around the rim just with my thumb and just clean that off you could use a little bit of kitchen towel if you wanted to I just find you've got a lot more control like this although it's a bit messy but it gets the job done I felt like the wings needed a little something extra so I took some layer blue horror added a bit of white to it and then just going to dry brush this on very lightly onto the wings just to try and catch those little veins that are sticking out of the wings and I think that'll just add a little bit of brightness to it make them pop a little bit more. And finally I took some Abaddon black base paint and this is literally going to go around the base and so I got some blue tack pop that on the stand and then if you put your base on top of that blue tack you can access every part of it so it makes it really easy to paint. I'll give this a couple of coats, one coat first, a tiny tiny bit of water, not much at all and then once that's dried one more coat over the top and we're good to go. And here's Butterfingers all ready to go now, he's ready for battle. This was a really quick model to paint, really enjoyed using the contrast paints on this one, certainly for that Willow the Wisp effect, it worked nicely and Athematic Blue is just such a great colour. And then with the snake bite leather on the trunk, I think that worked really nicely with all the colours of the mushrooms too. If you haven't discovered Moonstone yet, definitely give it a go. It's one of my favourite games, certainly my favourite fantasy game at the moment. I've done loads of videos on the channel showing you how to play it and loads of painting videos too for many of the characters. So they're all available if you'd like to check them out. That's it for this video though. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, it'd be great if you hit the like button. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And now I'll just tell you a little bit more about my Patreon that's changed. We've kept the tiers pretty much the same. Just tweaked it, added some new names and pictures now. So starting off with the Survivor. This is £3 a month. And for this tier, you get to support the channel, which is awesome. Thank you so much. And you're going to also get any expansions that we bring out for our games up to £2.50. So £2.50 and under, you'll get all those for free. And then if you go for the standout Survivor, that one's £5 a month. And so now you get the same perks as before, but this time you'll get any expansions, quests or supplements that we bring out up to £5 each. So if we bring out a few of those a month, you're going to do really well and certainly worth doing. Then we've got the £10 a month tier and this is called the Mutts Nuts. And this is going to give you all of those things you've seen before. Support the channel, 
any and all supplements under £5 will be free. You also get a copy of the PDF for Weekend Warriors as well. And on top of that, you get your name mentioned just like these names here. And that will feature in all the long form videos we put on YouTube. And then we've got one final tier. I took away a few tiers, but left one in that I think is really cool. It's called the Brainy Bunch. Now, this one's £33 a month. I'm limiting it to 30 people, so I could do one each day. And this one's really cool. You get everything that you've just seen for all the other tiers, but it's a great way to get yourself featured in there if you're a small business or if you want to do something like a gift, maybe a happy birthday shout out or something like that for someone that would be fun because each month you'll get one video assigned to you. And in that video, I'll put a thank you slide with your logo, details, website link, that kind of thing. And you'll be the sponsor of that video. So that's a great way. Again, if you've got a business, that's going to be a perfect cheap way to get yourself out there in front of a lot of people. So it'd be awesome if you want to check out my Patreon page. There's a link down below. Be awesome to see you there.